Hi there. Last week I did a video um, for my newsletter and I received so many lovely, loving and supportive comments on my blog, at Vimeo, by email, and even a few by phone. A couple of the comments raised an issue that really concerns me and I discovered this morning how that issue affects my business um, as well as how it affects the businesses of other accidental entrepreneurs. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today for about five minutes. At the end, I'm going to ask you to buy The Way of the Accidental Entrepreneur and if you have the program to join Shaboom County, if the video makes sense to you. So let's get started. The reason that I was troubled by a couple of the responses I received this week is that they offered advice and suggestions for how to heal my wrist and I hadn't asked for advice or suggestions. A couple of them went so far as to express their pain over my suffering and that troubled me because A, I hadn't been experiencing suffering as I define it and even if I had been, I didn't want to be responsible for someone else taking on my suffering. So I thought about this and I realized codependence is endemic. It's rampant among accidental entrepreneurs. At this point, I was thinking in terms of you, not me. Codependence, as the dictionary defines it, is an excessive reliance on the emotional, uh, an excessive emotional and psychological reliance on a partner, a particular partner that we see as needing our help. Well, accidental entrepreneurs often go to work for themselves because they want to help people. This is not a bad thing. However, when we help people without making a clear exchange, we put them in a position of owing us, we sometimes co-opt their experiences, and we keep ourselves and our businesses from taking in the energy and resources we need to be healthy. Codependence is why I believe so many accidental entrepreneurs hesitate to charge for our services, avoid talking about money, experience chronic low self-esteem, and experience very high stress levels, especially in view of the scope and size of their businesses. Those are pretty good reasons to raise this issue, and I was excited about sharing that insight with you. And then this morning, I was hit by a lightning bolt. You know how it's said that when we are irritated by something in another person, it points to something in ourselves that needs work or that we're repressing or don't like. And this morning I received uh, feedback from my coach. I'd asked him for help specifically with selling, with my reluctance to ask people to buy my work. And my coach reminded me that it's my responsibility to make my work available to people who might benefit from it and to offer them an opportunity to buy it. He reminded me too that clients and customers are people under my care, guidance, and protection. I got to thinking, what happens when I don't sell that care, guidance, and protection? What happens when I act as though I should give that care, guidance, and, and protection? Well, number one, it deprives the other person of the opportunity to say, yes, I want more of that, or no, thank you. Number two, when I think that I'm supposed to give it all away, when I feel ashamed or wrong about asking for compensation and being overt about it, I'm treating the other person, I'm taking them hostage, essentially. I'm doing them a favor that they cannot reciprocate. And finally, when I put out more energy than I take in in my work, 
I become burnt out and resentful. Selling is essential to balancing the energy, the commitments, the relationship that we have with clients and prospective clients. It's not a matter of requiring them to buy. We don't need to manipulate people into buying. But if we don't ask people to buy, they don't have an opportunity to decide what they want, how much they want, and when they want it. So I gave myself an assignment. First, to let you know at the top of this video that I was going to ask you to buy something. Second, to follow through. Here's the pitch. If what I've said about codependence among accidental entrepreneurs resonates with you, if it raises issues that keep you from being successful, or that maybe even make you uncomfortable with the word success, then the way of the accidental entrepreneur is for you. It will show you how to work with your stuff so that you can thrive in business without sacrificing your values or your authenticity or your integrity. If you have the book, please join Shaboom County. It's a community that shows people who have the book and the program how to put it into effect. There are links to both The Accidental Entrepreneur and Shaboom County in the email. Thanks so much. Talk to you next week.